Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War and our newly started Confederate Let's Play. In our last video, we fought the Battle of Potomac Fort, Newport News, and the First Battle of Bull Run, winning victories in all three and beginning to build our reputation up. We've begun building an army with a focus on politics and army organization as well as logistics. Politics will take the primary seat, but army organization will need to take some key role given that we need to build an army up capable of dealing with the Yankee hordes. As you've seen here, we are playing as the Confederacy. We've currently built out our first core to maximum strength based on current uh, abilities. We have three divisions, totaling some 13,500 infantry. We have 32 artillery pieces and 750 cavalry. We're just beginning the first Western campaign, which focuses on the Battle of Shiloh. We have quite a bit of money left over here with about $105,000, but the key thing holding us back at the moment is high quality weapons. We've got some 1841 Mississippis we could use to equip some of our forces. We have some Lorenzes we could purchase as well to equip our forces, but nothing else is larger than the 150 that we need in order to build our forces out. Additionally, I'm kind of surprised here, but we could purchase some Henry repeating rifles, uh, probably only enough to equip maybe a skirmisher unit. It's worth considering. I have no idea why we have access to this so early in the war. Um, I don't, I'm kind of confused about that. We've also got some additional weapons in, in inventory if we wanted to sell some of these off or something to that effect, uh, but I don't see the purpose in doing that quite yet. One thing I am going to do before we go to battle, however, is we have a 750-man cavalry brigade under Jeb Stewart. Before this first battle, I'm actually going to go ahead and equip them with Colt M1855s. These, I don't know why they look quite that long, but my understanding is these should just basically be basic Colt revolvers with sabers. They'll be a huge upgrade on our reloading capability for our cavalry, and no detriment to their uh, to their melee capability. So they're still uh, shock troops but with better reloading so we'll go ahead and spend some money equipping our troops yes, with that uh, with that being said i think we're about ready to fight this next battle uh, which is the battle of the ambush convoy so we'll go ahead and we'll jump in here uh, and uh, fight this okay so here you go, the Union is massing its army near our capital, Richmond. Almost certainly they are preparing to attack and threaten to destroy our new government prematurely. Our scouts reported that one of their most important supply convoys loaded with heavy ammunition and weapons is on the way to support the Yankee army. We need to ambush and seize the supplies from at least one wagon. Two local cavalry units have already taken position to join the attack under your command. So we've got two local cavalry regiments, some 800 men, and we've got a elements of our first corps. We can bring 10 brigades to battle. Uh, we have a total of 12 in this first corps, but we can bring 10 to battle. So we'll go ahead, and this is one of the minor battles. This is taking place in late 1862. Uh, you can see here the enemy is going to be moving a supply convoy down this road, uh, and they may also have some additional reinforcements coming up under General McDowell from the east. Uh, we need to ambush the enemies and seize the convoys before their local reinforcements arrive. So you can see here we can deploy these forces on the map. We've got two units in reserve because we can only bring ten to battle. So what I'm actually going to do... Can I... Will that make a difference? No. Supply convoys don't... Or supply wagons don't matter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull one of our infantry brigades out of the fight. We're going to go ahead and put our cavalry regiment in the fight. So between the two regiments already on the field... We should have a total of three cavalry units, which we'll use to race forward and, and hopefully seize the enemy's supply convoys uh, before uh, the enemy reinforcements can arrive. Additionally, we are going to need to race some infantry forward as well to occupy the enemy infantry, which is escorting these convoys. So ideally, what we do is we pin the enemy infantry with our own infantry, then the cavalry sweeps in behind them to take the wagons, and then we withdraw before enemy reinforcements arrive. Or at least that's my plan. Our two artillery batteries will stay back in the woods along with these two infantry brigades to sort of have a fallback line if we need one. So we'll go ahead and start the battle, and we're going to go ahead and pause so we can issue orders. So I'm going to go ahead and have this infantry here march into these woods here. They'll kind of form a blocking position for any troops arriving from the north. Uh, additionally, we're going to go ahead and have 
the infantry here in the south march into the open. Well, actually, these guys are going to march south through these woods. Butler's Brigade and Lane's Brigade are going to march across the open here, and uh, we're going to leave these two infantry brigades in reserve. Additionally, Jones's cavalry is going to sweep north here along this open terrain, uh, looking for the enemy, and Davis's cavalry is going to sweep south here along these roads. Uh, Stewart's cavalry is going to join Davis. He's going to move through the woods and then into the open here and hopefully behind any enemy troops if they're really coming down this road, as recon indicates. Additionally, Wrath's uh, brigade is going to move to this observation post, and actually we're going to go ahead and move our artillery here into, into the open here as well to get them in range, because our artillery is a little bit short range. The 6-pound guns have decent range, but the 12-pound howitzers have much shorter range. So we'll move them into the open to provide some support as well. So we'll go ahead and hit the play button, and we'll see how this all unfolds. I'll have to be careful with that cavalry in the north, since they're moving through open terrain. They're going to be moving very quickly indeed, so we'll see how this all plays out. All right, so we've spotted the enemy. We spotted their supply convoys and their infantry. Marching this general direction. I'm going to go ahead and move Butler on the run. Rocker's also going to move on the run, and Lane is going to move on the run. I think on the run. So we've got two infantry brigades we need to kind of engage here with our own infantry. And then we need, we've got some supply con or supply wagons that we need to seize before enemy uh, reinforcements arrive. So you can see the supply wagons are retreating east. The enemy infantry appears to be trying to follow them. But we've got our own infantry here that are going to occupy their attention and engage them as well. While our, while our cavalry here moves into their rear. Or at least that's the objective here. Wow, they're charging our infantry here. So the challenge here is if this enemy infantry retreats into our cavalry, could... Oh, nice. They just seized two wagons. All right, we're going to charge the infantry with one of these brigades, charge the uh, wagons with the other to occupy Bernie. Oh, shit. Trying to seize this last wagon. There we go. All right. Oh, shit. Don't retreat into the enemy. They'll retake their wagons. All right, get those wagons out of there. And now that we've seized them, really the key is just going to be to, to pull our, our troops back, protect those wagons, and get those troops out of there. Shit. Enemy reinforcements are arriving. All right. Stuart, I want to protect you because you're part of our core units. The other two cavalry brigades, I don't care as much about. But Jones, you're actually going to go here and delay Burnside. Right, fall back here. Preston, come up to support him a little bit. Again, Jones is really just providing a delay. So, kind of a rear guard here. Davis will do the same. I'm fine sacrificing those troops if I have to. The key is just getting these wagons out of uh, the fray before it's too late. All right, Preston, fall back. Siegfried, fall back. Butler as well. All right, Franklin, you can go ahead and charge here. Again, just to buy time, or Davis, you can charge Franklin is what I meant to say. Just to buy time so we can get these wagons off the open field where the enemy can easily try and retake them. Most of our wagons, I think, are relatively safe now. Our artillery is playing a minor role here in kind of harassing the enemy. 
go ahead and pull Siegfried back here. He's moving through the woods, so he's moving slowly. Davis surrendered. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right, well, we lost some of our, uh, we lost one of our cavalry battery or brigades. Um, where's the other one? Okay, Jones is engaging. Jones is fighting Jones down here. And Jones surrendered. God damn it. Yes, when they give me AI troops, I do kind of treat them as cannon fodder, but... It is what it is. Alright, let's pull these wagons out. Let's get all of these wagons off the map. So they can't be retaken. We've captured all three supply wagons, which are our only objectives. There's really no reason to stay and fight at this point. Um, so we'll just kind of hang back here in, in this good defensive terrain. If the enemy wants to assault us, they can feel free. Uh, these guys are... could be in better defensive terrain. Are they really going to move cavalry out here? No? Okay. I'll inflict, free, in, inflict, I'll inflict free casualties on them if they let us. Siegfried's kind of our left flank. Butler's moving in here to have a little bit more of a cohesive line. Crocker will move you south a little bit. And Lane will have you face this way. So you can see the enemy, I don't know if they outnumber me, but it's pretty darn close. We've got one brigade out here in the open with two artillery batteries just kind of bombarding the enemy to inflict some casualties. I don't see any enemy guns yet really to counter us. So really it's kind of free target practice at this point. Okay. Moore and Lynch again doing their jobs. Wraith providing support should the enemy decide to assault them. We can always bring these brigades forward as well, should we need to. Outside of the our own units, which we allowed, you know, the cannon fodder units we, we allowed to use, we've lost very few men in our own regiments. 40 in Butler's Brigade, about 87 in Prexton, 1 in Siegfried. And that's it so far. I could have sworn the enemy was... Oh, they're bringing up some artillery here under Hunt. Um, but we'll just kind of, I think we're going to just fast forward at this point and, uh, allow our artillery to keep doing a little bit of work on them. We'll see how these casualties hopefully mount and we'll see if the enemy, they're bringing up some additional guns. We'll see if they start some counter battery fire or if they shoot at our infantry. Um, looks like they're shooting at Moore's battery. He just took one casualty, but then Hunt's adjusting. Elder's going to, into position here, so... Couple of casualties on Moore's part. No guns lost yet, I don't think. I think you've got to lose like 20 men or so for uh, for a gun to be destroyed. And at this point, it's just kind of an artillery artillery duel where we're just inflicting some casualties. The enemy is inflicting a few back, but relatively light. And uh, the more men we kill, the more weapons we can seize or, or steal from them. So we'll just kind of fast forward for the next 30 minutes here. Moore's losing more men than I'd like. He's probably going to lose one gun, but we'll, I'm assuming we'll recover it. Oh, they're shooting at Lynch now, too. Okay, we're almost victorious, I think. Almost. See if they lose 25 men or not. We're one man away. No! I think that's one gun. I could be wrong. Hundred and eighty-two to twenty-four, hundred and twenty-four to three. Lynch is doing a little bit better, but there's a victory for you. Confederacy lost 132 infantry, one gun, 31 men. 393 cavalry, mostly from the regiments which were gifted to me. 
So, pretty successful battle there. Uh, if we take a look at the goods seized, uh, we seized a whole bunch of supplies, which I don't really understand how that plays. Does that just give us money after the battle, or how does that work? I'm not, I don't fully understand that. Uh, got mostly our 1844s back, captured a few 1842s. Officers, Daryl Lynch is promoted to Lieutenant Colonel, so that's nice. And, uh, yeah, overall a, a pretty easy, successful uh, victory and a raid. Um, we captured 315 prisoners, which give us an additional 484 additional recruits, which more than offsets any of our losses here. You can see, oh no, we need to... <laughs> one one recruit needed for Siegfried. That'll probably be a lonely guy. 84 for Preston, so that's 85, 89. Um, 127. 127. Oh, plus Stewart's men, so 37. So, about 164, we got 400 plus uh, replacements, plus the additional four or 3,000 or so replacements that you get for winning that battle. So, certainly a, a successful engagement. We do have to buy one more six pounder, but overall, a very successful engagement, a very successful battle there. Uh, we gained one career point, which I'm actually going to use to army organization, because what that'll allow us to do is it'll allow us to expand our brigades to 2,000 men, um, which I don't. I don't know if I want to do that quite yet. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Um, some of our units yes, don't sir. have enough men. Okay, so we are running into one of the key pro one of the key challenges as playing as the Confederacy, in my view, is having sufficient weapons. Less so, it seems money. Uh, but having sufficient weapons to outfit all of your troops. So we're going to buy some Lorenzas, which are kind of the best weapon that we have enough of to build a whole brigade with. We've got 2,179 Lorenzas that we can buy for $44,000, which we're going to do. This is an Austrian-made uh, rifled musket. So Siegfried's Brigade in our first division will have that weapon, uh, and then that will free up those 2,000 uh, 1842s yeah. for us to equip the rest of these guys with. Uh, as we kind of build out the rest of these brigades to their 2,000 manpower strength. Now, that does also mean with the increase in the size of brigade, really we need to start looking at getting better than majors in command of brigades, ideally lieutenant colonels, maybe even colonels, uh, although if they're a little bit more experienced, the lieutenant colonels are okay. Let's actually go ahead and give Crocker's brigade some 1841s, spend $34,000 on that. And then that will open up again some more Springfields, which we had run out of, uh, to equip the troops. So we're starting to equip some of our soldiers with rifles uh, as well. And interesting, the rookie replacements that you get for the Confederacy, I mean, some of these units, frankly, uh, are are um, so inexperienced using rookies doesn't really hurt you all that much. But some of these units, I mean, we just added a quarter or a third more men, and these guys really didn't lose much in terms of their experience. So... Um, worth thinking about. Let's see here. Do we have any officers in? No, we don't. So we probably need to start buying better officers as well to equip some of these brigades because, again, you're getting penalties for majors commanding 2,000 men. Um, so, you know, that's something to think about. Uh, but overall here with that additions, uh, we've increased the core from 14,000 men. Actually, it was 13,500 infantry up to 18,000 infantry. A far stronger core. We could start thinking about building a second core, but I'm not going to get into that quite yet. Um, we'll probably wait until after Shiloh, because you can only bring one core to battle at Shiloh anyway. We've still got $71,000 and 2,300 recruits left uh, in, our, uh, in our arsenal, and we've got... Quite a bit of weaponry that just we don't have enough manpower. So we could sell these Springfields for 2800 We could sell these Sharps for another 3000 These Smiths for 4700 These Colts for, three, for almost 4000 Some Koken Brothers. So, I mean, we've got some money that we could, we could generate by selling some of our excess uh, weaponry. But we're not going to do it quite yet. Um, I don't know if we have any guns with at least 16 guns to form a new battery. We don't. Uh, we don't have a lot of, of artillery in stockpile either, uh, so that is kind of what it is. I think what I'm going to do is I'm really going to kind of continue focusing on army organization for the next battle as well. So if we win the very next battle, one more army org will also allow us not just to have these 2,000-man brigades, but to have five brigades per division, which I think would really help an additional 6,000 infantry or so, or maybe just 4,000. Maybe we'd give the third division a battery of artillery. 
Um, but somehow getting some additional manpower to have maybe a 20,000-man core going into Shiloh uh, would help a lot. Shiloh's not the next battle, though. We do have one more battle before the fight for Shiloh. Uh, you can see here we've got the Battle of Stay Alert, which I think is a defensive battle which the Union attacks you in kind of uh, the Corinth area in February of 1862, and then that's followed up by the major battle of Shiloh. You can see here because we won that victory of, of uh, supply convoy ambush, uh, the enemy weapons at Shiloh will be reduced in quality, uh, which should be nice, especially because we've started to outfit this first division of ours with rifles. We've got Siegfried's Brigade with Lorenzas, Crocker's Brigade with Mississippis, and frankly, let's, well, we don't have enough, we don't have enough guns. We've only got 1,500 of them. Uh, I was going to say, why don't we give more Mississippis to some of these troops, uh, but it doesn't look like we've got sufficient inventories. Um, yeah, none of these gun, other guns have enough to equip a full brigade, uh, which could be a challenge if we win this next battle. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and bump supply for the corp to, well, we've got the money. Let's bump it up to 30,000, which I think is, oh, that's not the max. What is the max? Just curious. Thirty-five thousand. I don't want to. I don't want to risk it quite yet. We'll put twenty-five thousand because that's going to be important when the Battle of Shiloh comes around. Uh, it's a long fight. It's a lot of fighting on one day. You can easily burn through your supply, um, and uh, making sure we have sufficient supply is important. We've got the excess money that we can't use uh, really anywhere else because we don't even have enough guns to use it. So we might as well use it while we have it on supply to kind of bump that that supply tally up a bit. Um, we've also got some reputation we could use to get some extra manpower. We don't really need the manpower. We, we don't have anywhere to put them. We could use it to get some additional Lorenzes, which would be great uh, to have Crocker's Brigade with Lorenzes. Then we could shift those Mississippis into Hexamer's Brigade. Uh, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. Uh, well, actually, well, I make... Why does King's Brigade have... Rather those rifles be over here. How much does that cost? It's only nine reputation. Let's do that. We're going to spend nine reputation on 2,000 Lorenzas. We're going to go ahead and equip Crocker's Brigade with those Lorenzas. And then we're going to go ahead and take those Mississippis and give them to Hexamer. So that entire first division will be equipped with rifles. 4,000 Lorenzas, 2,000 Mississippis, and then King's... Um, Brigade's going to have their weapons replaced with Springfields. And then we're going to go ahead have and have Preston's Brigade to take up the arms of the Mississippis. So a full six or 8,000 of our infantry are now equipped with rifles, uh, which is mm, a little bit less than half of our total infantry are now equipped with rifles, which is very important, especially at Shiloh. You know, this is early in the war. The Union troops don't have the best weapons yet. So that's going to give us a bit of an advantage here. Um, let's see here. They're not as good in melee, but I think I think that that difference will tell at Shiloh. Additionally, I want to I want to give Hexamer. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Hexamer. I love your name, but we've got to give someone else uh, this command. So we're going to give a Lieutenant Colonel Fred Race command of your brigade. It'll be Race's brigade. Um, so we've got all at least lieutenant colonels in the first division. This is kind of our crack uh, division, if you will, the first division. Um, the second division will start building up toward that. Uh, let's see here. But let's see if we've got any less experienced. King is not very experienced. We'll go ahead and give Hexamer uh, King's Brigade. And so there's a slightly lower penalty because he's closer to that promotion. Um, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money completely overhauling our command because some of these minor battles can be useful in building up your officer's experience so then they can get promoted so you get a higher ranking officer for free. Um, but anyway. And yes, the 1841 is a rifle. The uh, 1842 is a smoothbore. So this is a smoothbore. That's why its efficiency is kind of middling. And the, uh, the Mississippi is a rifle, which is why it's got a little bit better efficiency. The Lorenz is better efficiency and melee than the uh, Mississippi, uh, and it's also got slightly better reloading. The real penalty for the Mississippi is really slow reloading compared to the 1840. Well, it's all, I mean, it's, it's, it's relative, but the uh, 
Springfield 1842 does have slightly better uh, loaded uh, or loading capabilities. They all are slow as hell. Um, all right. So Siegfried, we're going to name these guys so I know what they have. Uh, we'll call Siegfried's Brigade the Stonewall Brigade. And I'll just remember that if the if the brigade has a um, if it has a name, then I'll know that they have rifles. We're just gonna call these guys the Lorenz Brigade. And Race will go ahead and change his name to the Mississippi Brigade. Okay, so we've got the Stonewall Brigade, the Lorenz Brigade, and the Mississippi Brigade. Preston's Brigade, we're going to rename as well. Um, what should we name them? Hmm. Benjamin, not, not everything else is rifled, so uh, you've got the older weapons. The reboard farmers are smoothbore. The farmers are also smoothbore. Um, but anyway. Uh, let's see here. What do you guys think? What should we name Preston's Brigade? The Texas Brigade? We can go with that. Okay, so we've got the Texas Brigade, the Stonewall Brigade, the Lorenz Brigade, and the Mississippi Brigade. This is my way of understanding who has a what type of weapon. Um, and actually, it's fitting that the Stonewall Brigade is in the 1st Division, because Thomas Stonewall Jackson is the commander of the division. It doesn't look like it lets me rename the division either. Um... All right, so let's go ahead and let's fight the next battle. We're going to go ahead and fight the battle of Stay Alert, which will allow us to earn an additional 5,000 troops and additional four reputation, so it'll get us about half of that reputation back that we just spent. We're still sitting at 33, which gives us no morale effect, so no penalty, but also no boost. I believe we had a slight boost in morale before we spent that money on those Lorenz rifles. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for Episode 5 of my Confederate Let's Play of Ultimate General Civil War. In this video, we were able to successfully raid a Union supply convoy with our cavalry and then hold off the Union forces uh, before withdrawing. So this was a successful battle. In our next video, we'll be defending a supply depot against Union efforts at uh, overrunning the position. We'll see how that all plays out. That's the last battle before Shiloh. So this video, the cavalry raid, is complete. In the next video, we will be fighting the final battle before we actually go into the Battle of Shiloh. I hope you guys all enjoy this video. As always, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.